Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler from Melda Production. Before I showed you how you could make an amp in M-Turbo Amp, but today I'll go over how to make a light overdrive pedal. Now I could just do something really simple like, okay, just, you know, put a gain knob on there, an output knob, you know, clip it a little bit and that's done. And that's perfectly fine, that works. But let's talk about how we can take this and actually do something a little bit more in depth. So let's get started. So I'm going to use this amp, which is why I have two instances of uh, M-Turbo amps. The second one is just going to be the amp. I won't go over this. you probably heard this before, though. See here, there's a good amount of gain, but you might still want to push this a little bit farther, depending on what type of music you're doing. Or you might just want like a little of boost for like a solo or something. Who knows? You might want to tighten it up. So I'll show you how to do that. And I want to make something like this, which is on the first one. Here we go. Now you see, this should be almost like a like a tube screamer or like almost like a SD1 style uh, overdrive. So here it is with it off. Here it is with it on. There's quite a bit more gain there. Actually, I don't know how much gain it has, but it, you know, it's a good amount. But also, if you listen to the low end here, and then I turn it on. It should tighten it up a bit. This amp itself that I'm using actually is a bit tight so you can't hear it. But if you use it with something else, you'll hear like that kind of low hump and mid emphasis really, you know, tightens things up if you're going to play like metal or something like that. So let's go over like how to make something similar to this. So I'm going to start here with A. We don't have anything in here. The first thing I want to do is I just want to go to the input EQ and let's just roll off some of the low end. Uh, you can use 12 uh, you know, decibels per octave or 24, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm not going to cut off too much that you can hear. I just want to get rid of the stuff that you can't hear with a guitar. So like 40 hertz, like there's not going to be like any guitar stuff down there. So I'm going to cut that off. I could do the same thing with the top end if you want, or I can kind of leave it. Uh, maybe I'll cut it down a little. Let's try like 8,000. So if I'm getting any radio signals or something through there, it won't come through. I'll hope. Hopefully there's no radio signals coming through my computer, but who knows. Uh, we have our distortion section here. Before we get into any of this setup, let's set up the gain knob. Before, when I did it, I was going down and up, but you can just go up. And I'll do it this time just to show you how it's done. Uh, you can go, you know, negative gain and positive gain or just positive gain. It doesn't really matter that much. Uh, one thing I should do is actually make sure it's not bypassed. Ooh. Sorry, turn my guitar volume down. So you're not hearing that much, actually. Let me cut this out altogether. Um, so now we have the gain in, and let's move it up to uh, 25 or so. Okay, that seems like a good amount. I'll label it gain, and just group this and like call it OD for overdrive. So now you see that moves up and down. It starts at 12. Pretty good. Uh, this one, actually, let's use this as our volume. I'm going to use gain out instead of volume, although you could use the volume if you wanted to. Go down, up. So that'll give us, oh, which one did I do? Uh, is it here? Yeah, there we go. Volume, OD, put it in the same row. And this is like negative 40 and 40, which to me is a little bit too much, so I'm going to do negative 40. 20, actually I'll do negative 30, negative 30 and 30, so that way we can actually push the gain quite a lot, or not the gain, the volume quite a lot into the amp if we want to, but like 50 or 60, that, that seems a bit much. And last thing, let's get to our tone control. So there's a few ways we can do this. Uh, what I'll probably do is take this and move the high pass and low pass like this. Let's see here. Right. Learn, move this back and forth, and move this back and forth. So now I have high pass and low pass. Put it in the same row, label it tone, OD, and I'll have it going from max, let's try 10,000 kilohertz, and minimum maybe 1,000, like this. And here, minimum, I don't know, what should I do? Uh, about, uh, let's try 60. 
that's below the guitar's range too, but that's kind of okay. And maximum, let's see, try 400. Now, when I try to use the tone control now, this is absolutely no good. I want one of them going opposite ways. So when I turn to the right, I want the high pass to go up, but I don't want the low pass to move. So I'm going to have to invert one of these. I forget which one I do. I try inverting the high pass first. They're moving in opposite directions. That's definitely not what I want. Let me see. Uh, actually, there's something else I can do. Because I want it in the middle where they're both at a neutral position. Because now you see, okay, they're both like in the middle of their ranges, which I don't want. So I'm going to have to use this transformation shape. So let's see. Low pass. Let's set this to snap to X and Y. Then I want this in the middle, 50%. I believe all the way up here. So you need to see now at 50%, my low pass is all the way at the top. And then as I move it down, you see it's going down. Perfect. Now I want to do the same thing for the high pass. Although I think I'm going to have to invert it. I always get confused about using the inversion settings with this. Or maybe I could just do it like this. Put this here, put this here, and move this. And if I did everything correctly, it should move correctly. Is if I turn the tone knob to the left, it should bring down the low pass filter. Woo! Oh no, I did everything backwards. Try inverting it, see if that helps. No, still everything's messed up. Uh, let me just take the inversion off. Put it back to normal. Uh, I always get confused about this. I'm sorry. Uh, try this. Okay. Then move this one. There. Now they're moving correctly. Uh, let me play through this so you can kind of hear what the high pass and low pass is doing. So, actually, let me turn the gain down. So here. <laughs> And for me, I think, you know what, I don't really like the sweep of that, and it's not going down far enough, so instead of a thou- actually, let's try 24 decibel per octave, like that, and I'll cut off a little bit more, and let's also change the sweep here. Uh, so I believe it would be, you know, this way. So it comes on a little bit faster. This means instead of going linearly from 10,000 to 1,000, it'll kind of go a little bit faster here and then kind of slow down at the end. And I'll do the same thing here, although I think it might be in reverse. 50%, that's 51, that's okay though. That, that, so here we go. <laughs> Now, that can still be too much or too little, but you get the basic idea, just that to taste. There's another way you can do this using a high shelf in here. So if I wanted to take something like this and move the shelf up and down instead of using high pass filters and low pass filters like I am now, that also works. So you can do that to taste. But now let's get into the main part, which I want to show you before, which is the gain. I'm going to use three gain stages here. I'll turn on all three. And now this is probably a bit too much. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this second stage and set it to clip three, which will be really loud. And you're probably thinking, like, what are you doing? This is crazy. This is, you know, nothing like uh, a low-gain overdrive. But just stick with me. Next thing I'm going to do is just turn this completely off, completely disabled. And you're probably thinking, okay, this is a little bit crazy now. And let's change this to, let's say, clip four or so. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to just turn this off. And I'm going to work with stage two. What stage two is going to do is it's going to shape the sound and give it that mid-range hump. I'm going to take the high pass filter and switch it to six decibels per octave. I'm going to switch the low pass filter also to six decibels per octave. What I want to do now is I want to move this up to around 740, 750, 720, someplace between 700 and 750. Let's try 720. You can set this wherever you want. And let's set the low pass to 800. 
you're thinking like, whoa, this is really doing a lot. This is going to cut off a lot of the single, a signal and make it really mid-rangey, like this. I'm turn this one off. If I take them both off here, it sounds like this. Six decibels per octave is actually fairly tame, but you can hear it, it makes a pretty big difference. It's really bringing out that mid-range. So I'll add this one here, this will make it a little bit louder. Actually, let's switch amps for a second just so I can hear how much distortion is in here. So this is kind of important, like, for this one, because it's already distorted, I, it's hard to hear a difference. So let's do this one. And bypass it. This should be completely clean. This amp's clean. So now when I put this on, pretty good. Turn the gain up. Oh, way too loud. Okay, that's pretty good. I might want to lower that. Let me see how much this is distorting here. Yeah, that's actually distorting. Okay, I'll go back into here. I Just for me, I'm going to turn the gain down just a little bit. 20. 20 is good. Okay. Now, this one, stage 2 is good. Stage 3, for the most part, is good. I might turn it down. I might want to make the input-output a little bit more similar. So maybe negative 10 or so. Now, the next part is stage one. You're wondering, like, why did you disable it? It's not doing anything. What I want to do is I want to make a parallel path. And you're like, what, what are you talking about? This button here in stage two, this will make stage two run in parallel to stage one. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure the, I want to check the volume of this. So I'm just going to hit a note. I'll try to hit it, you know, the same every time. It's probably better if I recorded this actually, but I'll just do it this way anyways. Make sure I clear this here and I'm going to look here and try to match the volumes. Yeah, I'm getting like 2.6, maybe a little bit lower. I might turn the gain down so I can do this without clipping. So like eh, negative 7.3 or so. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Okay, so it's peaking at like negative 10, so let's add like three decibels or so. Okay. I just want to make sure the volumes are matched. Now I'm going to click this parallel, and now both of these should have the same volume going into here. And... Okay, and now put the gain up. There we go, that's what we want. If we bypass it, uh, or I can even put a bypass switch on here, just click learn, turn that on and off. Just make this button called on, off, with OD here, and uh, might want to invert that actually, and make it into a switch like this. Now let's look at the front of our GUI here. Here's our overdrive. <laughs> Turn up the gain. It's too much volume, but you get the idea. And we can also use this for, like I said, something like this. As opposed to off. You can really see it not only adds more distortion, but it also is, you know, really cutting the lows and making it much brighter. So that's how you can make, you know, something similar if you want. Uh, this one, I added some other things, like I had a fat boost as well as the normal one. So this is normal. This is
This is fat. <laughs> Maybe you can hear that a little bit, and you're wondering, like, how did you do that, or what's that doing? The only difference is, in the distortion stage here, you see here I have 715 for the normal. Fat, it's 320. This will let more lows through, through and you can actually do more than this if you want and add other things. I added a, a, a what was it? hot mode that has more gain, so instead of this... <laughs> All I did was alter the type of clipping here, so you see it's clip 2 as opposed to soft 3, and I think I added more gain someplace, or maybe I just changed the HP filter. So, by doing that, there's all sorts of different variations you can make, and that's one of the things I really like about doing things digitally. You don't have to worry about like changing components or all that kind of thing. You can easily adjust the frequencies and find out which ones, you know, sound best to you, and you can make, you know, whatever sound you want. So, you can use this, but also you can take it to you know, a completely different place if you want to. And I'll show you how you can do more with that and more with like the parallel stuff in the future. But uh, if you like this, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave those down below. And until next time, see you.